Today I'm going to answer a question from a student by the name of Michael Spurlock. So his question is, basically, does a potentiometer work in both series and parallel circuits? Well, a potentiometer doesn't really know whether it's in a series or parallel circuit. Uh, the difference is a series circuit is a circuit where there's only one possible path for the current, so it's a single loop from one side of a battery to another with all the circuitry in between. And a parallel circuit, somewhere there is a split. There are multiple paths for the current to follow, so somewhere the current can split and go multiple directions and then come back together before it comes back to the power source. So let's take a look at how a potentiometer might be used as a variable resistor in a series circuit. So here is a battery, and let's put a resistor here, and let's put another resistor here, and I'm not going to put any voltages here, I don't think I need to for this. And let's say that this is our load. So that resistor simply represents whatever circuitry we are running, whether it's a light bulb or a motor or who knows what. And we want to have a variable resistor here. So the symbol for a variable resistor simply puts an arrow through a resistor, simple enough. But where can you buy those? They really don't make a, quote, variable resistor proper. What you get is a potentiometer. So how do I hook up a potentiometer as a variable resistor? Well, I could just leave it not connected there and then take the wiper and connect it over like that. And that would work because now I have a variable resistance depending on how much of the resistor track is between the wiper and this side. So if this is a 10K variable resistor. If I have the wiper in the middle, I'd have about 5K. If I have it a quarter of the way over, it'd be about um, uh, two and a half K. But this is not the way it's done. It's actually done like that. We put the whole resistor in and then connect over to the wiper. The reason we do that is that this wiper is not the most reliable connection in the world. It may be better for some potentiometers, you know, better quality ones than others. But if we move over a bad spot in the track or for some reason lose our connection, then if we have this, then we have an open circuit and we might not want that. That might be very undesirable for one reason or another. So in this case, if somehow this doesn't make contact, we still have 10K of resistance, not an open circuit. So your potentiometer is put in like this to make a variable resistor. So there's only one possible current path. We, we're going to ignore that because um, this, this acts as a single unit. So we're not going to say, hey, wait, there's two paths for the current to flow. That means that's a parallel circuit there. Well, yeah, but we're going to zoom out and just look at it as one piece and it's just a variable resistor. But another way we can use a potentiometer would be something like this. And we'll have something like that. Now here's a load or some other circuitry over here. This is slightly different. Now the voltage goes through the load and then back over to here. And notice at this point we do have a parallel circuit. We have a series circuit up to this point, but then the current can split either this way or that way. So there's two possible current paths. So now we have a parallel circuit and of course they come back at this point. So there's a potentiometer used in both a series and a parallel circuit. So uh, the potentiometer really doesn't know whether it's series or parallel, and it's made series or parallel depending on how you hook it up. So uh, we can be more complicated about this. How about another resistor here? So if you watch the video on series and parallel circuits, which I recommend that you do, you'll see that now we have a combination circuit. It's a series circuit here becomes a parallel circuit there, comes back, now we can even make it more complicated, put another resistor here, comes back together, another series part, so the left half is a series circuit, the right half is a parallel circuit, and there's the potentiometer, and if the split off between the two is actually in the potentiometer. This might be a little confusing, so I want to make a point here. Let me just redraw this. And remember that the potentiometer acts, let's go ahead and draw all the components in here, I'm drawing the potentiometer as two separate resistors. 
and then this will go off to our third one. So let's say this was a 10K potentiometer. As I move that wiper up and down, what I have is a total of 10K between these, but as I move it up, I might end up with 2.5K here and 7.5K there. Or if I move that wiper down to the middle, I end up with 5K here and 5K here. And as I move it down further, I might end up with this situation where I have 7.5K here and 2.5K here or smaller or larger. And so the variable resistor, or should I say the potentiometer acts as a split off and these two resistors basically become ganged variable resistors. So that's what the potentiometer acts like. But we'll draw it back the way it actually is. It's a potentiometer with a wiper that goes over to here. Draw my arrow and whatever resistance that is. And so it splits wherever the wiper is and splits into a parallel circuit. So the answer is uh, a potentiometer can be used in a series circuit or a parallel circuit, depending on how you wire it in. So if you want it to act just like a variable resistor in a series circuit, once again, let me just draw how that is done. I'll just make this into a potentiometer. So we do put the two ends of the potentiometer together. So we have our total resistance in there, but then we hook up the wiper to one side. It can go to either side, depending on what you want to happen as you turn the potentiometer. This one, as we turn it one way, it's going to get higher and higher resistance. We flip it around, we turn it the same direction, it'll get lower and lower resistance. So it just depends on which way you want the knob to do whatever you want on which side. You have to look at the schematic and your physical layout to see which way that's going to work. So series circuit, there's your potentiometer as a variable resistor. Parallel circuit, there's your potentiometer actually splitting off. And of course, you know, if we have a series parallel circuits, we can put the potentiometer anywhere we need to put it. In fact, oh, just for the fun of it. Here's a Zener diode. If you don't know what that is, we talk about that in solid state devices, but it's a device that basically if the voltage across it is higher than the rated voltage. So if I go to get a Zener diode, it's going to say some certain voltage. And if the voltage across it tries to go higher than that voltage, then it changes its resistance to hold that voltage steady. And let's say I have a seven volt Zener diode and I want to have a variable voltage off of that. Now look at there, put a potentiometer and then here's my circuitry over here doing whatever, you know, uh, who knows what this circuitry is. Maybe this is a voltage reference for a power supply or something, but now I have seven volts there and I can use this potentiometer. And that's why they call them potentiometers. I can pick off anywhere from zero to seven volts as I move that potentiometer up and down. And so now we have series circuit, parallel circuit. Uh, here it's series to parallel again, gets pretty complicated. Once again, if this looks a little confusing, be sure to watch the videos on series and parallel and combination circuits to make sure you understand what's going on here. But yeah, series, parallel, series, parallel, parallel. It doesn't really matter. I put the potentiometer wherever I need to use it. And sometimes that will be a series circuit and sometimes that'll be a parallel circuit. So I hope that answered your question. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel and subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.